Same machine, same welder. The difference, preparation. Hello and welcome. In today's video, we're gonna talk about a couple different TIG tricks to make your weld instantly look better. Now, as welders, we know that weld prep and choice of materials and equipment plays a huge role in having a good weld. So today, in this video, I'm gonna be using Yes Welder's TIG 205P Pro. And we're gonna talk about a couple little tips that you must do as a TIG welder to ensure you get a quality weld. Let's start off with the first one. That is the metal preparation. With stick welding, you don't really have to do a lot of preparation. It goes through mill scale, it can be dirty, it can be windy outside. With TIG, it's the exact opposite. So here I have some old steel. And as we can see, it's rusty, it's kind of oxidized. It still has the mill scale on it. And if we're gonna TIG weld this, we have to clean it up. So let's talk about that. So as we know, when carbon steel sits out, it can rust, oxidize, that kind of stuff. This has to come off before we weld it, as does the mill scale. There's a bunch of different, you know, we can use an angle grinder, um, with thick mill scale, you know, you're going to use a grit that's a lot lower, like a 36 or a 50 grit to kind of get through the mill scale. On thinner sheet like this, actually one of my favorite tricks is to use just like a regular electric drill. And then to get one of these, just a small sanding disc attachment that you just put in the chuck and then you use a small sanding disc pad. And then it's very easy to just kind of get the mill scale off the edge. Of course, you don't really need to remove the mill scale from the entire piece of metal. We just want to remove it to where we're actually going to be welding. So here we've cleaned the edge off, no rust, no mill scale. But even though we've done this, there's still little tiny contaminants on here that we're going to take an acetone rag and wipe off to make sure that it's all good. Now let's see here. All right, so we can see that there's still that little bit of dirt on there from the grinding. So cleaning your metal with acetone too is a vital step to immediately making those TIG welds better. And lastly, the other part we do want to hit with acetone is the filler rod we get from Yes Welder as well. We're going to want to clean those just give them a couple wipe downs with that acetone, paper towel, or rag. Make sure that these are clean as well. One thing I really like about the Yes Welder rods, they are shorter. Standard filler rods are, I don't know, about twice as long as this. And when you're learning, it gets real hard when you have a filler rod just flopping around. So these ones from Yes Welder, they're a little shorter. If you're learning TIG, these shorter rods will make your experience so much less frustrating. I wish when I was learning TIG that these were around. So if you want to check these out, yeswelder.com. So speaking of filler rod though, let's talk about three ways to feed filler rod. Learning how to feed filler rod is one of the most difficult parts of learning how to TIG well. It can be frustrating when you're getting going. So here are three common hand positions that are used, and hopefully one of these will feel the most natural to you. The first one, one that a lot of people use, is they're gonna take your filler rod, take your feeding hand, you're gonna put the filler rod in between your first finger and your thumb, and then you're gonna take your first two fingers, put it on each either side of the filler rod, and you're basically going to do this motion, and that's how you're gonna pass the filler rod through your hand, as it burns down. The second way is you're gonna take same starting position right there. You're gonna take your middle two fingers, but then we're gonna curl our thumb back and use our thumb to feed and push the filler rod through. And the third way, this is the way that I like to do it, and it's kind of a hybrid of both, is we're gonna take the filler rod, again, place between our finger and our thumb, middle two fingers, but then what I do is I'm gonna bring my thumb a little closer and then I'm gonna do both. I'm actually gonna push with my two fingers and then push with my thumb as I'm bringing my two fingers back. So it's kind of like a caterpillar, kind of like an inchworm. Now I like this because it allows you to feed filler rod faster. And when you, you're doing a weld and everything's starting to heat up and it's starting to get a little too watery, you're about to lose control and you have to speed up that torch it's nice to be able to get the max amount of filler rod out so you can get ahead of that super watery, too hot weld and kind of get back to like a nice level of material, heat, and travel speed. Of course, the main thing when feeding filler rod is gonna be consistency and making sure you're 
consistently driving the same amount in the same time pattern the whole time. Choosing the right cup size. The cup is gonna be that piece that goes on the end of the TIG torch with the opening. This is going to dictate how the gas flows out of your TIG torch. To get a good weld, choosing the right cup is vital. Now, cups come in all different sizes. This right here is a size four. And as we can see, the opening on it for gas to come out is really narrow. When you have a narrower cup size, the gas tends to be more turbulent. Here's a size five, so it's a little bigger, and we can see it's a little bit more open, so the gas is gonna flow a little bit better through this than this. Now the trade-off is if you go too big, you're gonna waste a lot of excess gas. Or the other thing is you have to think about the weld joint that you're welding, right? Because let's say you're welding a like in a T, right? A bigger cup isn't gonna fit down into that weld joint as well as a smaller cup. So we have to think about actually the joint we're using first and foremost to get the proper gas flow. Now, another option that I really like and a lot of people do are gas lenses. So a gas lens takes the traditional cup and call it, sets it aside and has a gas lens. A gas lens directs the gas differently through the torch and out the end in a more streamlined and efficient manner to ensure the best possible gas coverage you have. Now gas lenses, because the gas lens is bigger, they do come with a bigger size cup typically. Now, but what you can do with that is because the gas coverage is so efficient and so smooth, you can put a lot more stick out. Stick out is gonna be how much the tungsten is sticking out past the cup. With a gas lens, you can do a lot more stick out so you can still get into those tight corners and be fine. And also it adds to visibility. It's a lot easier to see the arc when you're using a gas lens with longer stick out than if you're using a lot smaller traditional cup and call it with minimal to no stick out. Choosing the right cup is essential to a quality TIG weld. Tungsten preparation. Now we know that when the tungsten comes you have a flat blunted piece of tungsten and then we have to sharpen it into a tip to use, right? Now, a lot of times people will just go to your belt sander, dig this right in, get what looks to be a nice tip, but it's actually rough. When the tip of the tungsten is not ground smooth and well, you're gonna get a more erratic arc. When it's done nicely and smoothly, it's gonna be a lot better. So there are multiple companies that sell very expensive tungsten grinders. If you're a professional welder and you're welding all day on really high tech stuff, uh, when I worked in aerospace, we had a very nice tungsten grinder and it, it worked great as essential. They're just really expensive. Um, for uh, the at-home guys or people that aren't doing aerospace type stuff, a two different grinding application is typically sufficient. So what I like to do is get my initial grind and shape on a just a regular belt sander, but make sure the belt is is clean. It's not you're not doing aluminum and steel on the same belt or you're not doing stainless steel and aluminum on the same belt. You're not mixing these materials because what you grind on that belt will get ground a little bit into your tungsten and that's also going to mess up your weld. So having a dedicated belt for each type of tungsten you have for the application of metal is vital. And then after you get that nice clean original shape, go to a finer grit grinding disc and then really you can work that in. So hopefully some of these tips and tricks are gonna help you guys get those TIG welds looking beautiful. For more information on any of the products seen in this video, the TIG 205P Pro, Yes Welders, filler rod, cups, collets, gas lenses, gloves, tungstens, please check out yeswelder.com. And until next time, enjoy welding with Yes Welder.